Hey, hello, how are you? You have Jalan here with Far Out Tiny Homes. Today we are discussing solar. We're going to get a little bit into those nitty gritty details of what your solar system can do for you, how to prep for your solar system, because guess what? You will have to change your life up just a, yeah, a lot. And also we're going to take a little quiz at the end to see if you are ready for going off grid. All right, guys, hang on tight because this is going to be a wild ride. Let's get into it. So it may come as a shock. It may come not as a shock at all that most people are just not ready for solar. A lot of folks don't understand how they have to change their life in order to meet their solar needs. And by that, I mean, you can't just pretend that you're living on the grid when you're living off the grid. While you have a large resource at your disposal, you have to be very mindful of the power that you're using. So let's discuss it in a little more detail. Today, I'm going to go over some of the very first questions you need to ask, not only asking yourself a few questions, but asking your builder and or your installer. We're going to discuss some pricing. We're going to discuss some alternative backups that you have to have. No work around there. And then we're going to get into the quiz. So we're going to wrap this video up pretty quick. So hang on to the end. I want to see if you guys know your stuff. So you might be saying, what do you mean I need to be asking questions? What questions? Like, what are the three most important questions? So you want to know specifically who will be installing your system. And this really, this whole conversation, this is directed at folks who either are container homeowners or tiny home on wheel owners, and they are looking to go off grid with those units. Okay. So you want to know, is your tiny home builder installing your system or will the company being installing the system and then the second question you want to ask is you know what solar company are, will you all be purchasing the panels and the inverter and the batteries from this is important because you want to make sure that this company has authorized your builder to go ahead and install the unit that it won't void a warranty or anything like that you also want to know who the company is because you should be doing your research do they align with your core values a big, huge indicator for me when I want to do business with a company, whether it's me on my person in my personal life or it's me in my business life with Far Out Tiny Homes, does that company give back? Are they producing free, valuable content? Are they reliable? Do they know what they're talking about? And so as you all are doing your research and let's say your builder says, oh, I work with XYZ company. Okay, great. Now it's time for you to get in that hot seat, turn on the old Google and say, you know, XYZ company and see what they pop up. The companies that we choose to work with put out educational content for free. So it's really important to make sure that you are taking the time to educate yourself on your new system. And many solar companies do take the time to educate people on their products and how they need to change their life in order for this to be a successful solar journey. So let's get into pricing. Obviously, you're going to notice that huge price tag in, on the screen of $16,000. That is a starting price for a small, tiny home off-grid system setup. That does not include the backup power that is a necessity. So going off grid in the solar sense, it's a huge upfront cost. And so if you only have a minimal budget for your tiny home, there is some rethink there that there are not, you know, $5,000 solar systems out there that are going to keep up with you. You have to make this huge upfront investment uh, within your tiny home and within your life if you want to go off grid. Now, bullet point number two, there is a learning curve. Like you have to understand how to maintain your system. You have to understand what it's going to take for you to not go over your energy allotment for the day. You have to understand that you need to look above head and say, okay, today's a little cloudy. I got to take it easy on my AC, or maybe I should not do laundry today. And that brings us right into backup power because you guys, these systems will go down. There will be times when 
you burn through your energy, whether it's the dead heat of summer and you're running your AC and you have to run the dishwasher or you have to run a load of laundry and your system just gets drained, you have to have a backup generator. There is no question there. You need one because what will happen is you'll say, oh, whatever, I'll just monitor. And then you'll get yourself into a situation where you're like, oh my gosh, my batteries now or my inverter now won't turn on because I have drained my batteries. You don't know what to do and you're scrambling to figure it out. And can you imagine how stressful that would be? You go from, first off, you're off grid. So you're probably somewhere in the middle of nowhere. And you're like, how the heck am I going to fix this problem? So backup generator, that is a must. And it is not included in that $16,000 price tag. I would definitely earmark another $3,500 to $5,000 for uh, the labor and for the generator and the additional equipment necessary to hook up to the system so it kicks back to the generator when the system has been um, used up. That brings me to batteries. There are two types of batteries. There are lead acid based and there are lithium. The lead acid based are going to be a little bit less expensive, but they're only going to last you five to seven years. They have a life cycle, meaning they can only cycle so many times before they kind of just go kaput. The lithium batteries, obviously higher price tag, but they last 10 to 15 years. So if you have it in your budget to go lithium, you'll be doing your pocketbook a favor and you'll be doing the earth a favor because you'll really be able to use those batteries twice the time as compared to a lead acid. So I would suggest that you understand how much power you'll be using. You try to have a grasp on how many times your batteries are going to cycle per day so you can extend the life of the battery as long as possible. Because again, we're talking thousands of dollars um, in battery investment if you just eat through those life cycles. Because every time you drain them, there goes another cycle and they have to re-up, they have to gain that energy again. Long story long, basically you need to make sure that if you are deciding to go solar, you're, you're understanding your energy consumption. And again, the company that your tiny home builder buys the products through can help you with this. I'm just going to tell you up front, it is not necessarily the tiny home builder's job to educate you on your system. Solar power is intricate. And tiny home builders, that's their specialty. They can talk to you about build and they can talk to you about systems and all that stuff all day long. But you're going to want to talk to the company who specializes in solar to get the best, most time efficient answers. Okay, so what have we learned today? We've learned that we need to know if our builder is installing it or not who the company is, does this company offer any sort of education? And, and lastly, what do I need to change in my life to have a successful solar journey? Now, before we get into the test, if you're finding this content useful, hit that subscribe button. We're talking all things tiny, all things off grid, all the time. So if you like that content, if you need that content in your life, subscribe. And then if you think that I'm doing a good job, hey, smash that like button. It helps me out, builds my confidence, and lets me know I'm at least going kind of in the right direction. Thanks, guys. So here's the big test. I told you this was a quick video today, so let's get into it. I want to see if you know these things. We did not talk about this today. And the reason I didn't talk about these four questions was because I want to see where you're at in your solar journey. And I want you to leave comments below that are letting me know uh, yeah, I knew those questions, so I need a more in-depth video, or oh my gosh, I had no idea that those questions were even pertinent. So let's see if you can answer them. Number one, what's the best direction to face your panels? And this is a real big giveaway. So if you don't know this, you really need to start investing time in educating yourself, okay? And I'm not trying to be rude here. I'm just trying to be real, okay? If you face your panels north, what happens? Okay, just digest, just think about it. Number three, what specific maintenance will your system require? And again, these are this is a question that you will need to contact the manufacturer in order to understand, because you wanna be real clear on how you can support the longevity of your solar system, not just your panels and your inverter, but your battery, okay? And number four, what does voltage drop mean? These are things you're going to want to know 100%. Now, I won't leave you hanging for too long, obviously, in the big yellow uh, highlight there. Answers are in the description, you guys, so you can just jump down in there. But give me some feedback in the comments. What are you thinking? Like, what other things do you want to know in regards to solar? I will do my best to direct you 
and inform you on the specifics and the most important items within going solar. So that is all for today. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day. And you know what to do. Keep it groovy. Take care, guys.